Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user Lotto Winner Throwaway. I, 21 female, won the lotto a while ago and my family, 24 to 58 male and female, found out and is talking to me again. Hey, so I won the lottery quite a while ago. I don't really need to go further into how much, but a lot. I've decided to donate a lot of it to charities, especially towards NICU babies since my son was in there, and then put the rest away. I didn't tell anyone about this whole thing because I knew friends and family could turn into money grabbing folks, but I decided to tell my sister who really needed the money to pay rent for herself and told her not to tell anyone because of these reasons. She went against my wishes and contacted them anyway. That really pissed me off. I mentioned to her that he'll try prying back into our lives, and by him, I mean my dad. So yeah, most of my family, being my dad and his side of the family, isn't taking to me because his family hates his children for being half Japanese and half European. He listened to his own mother and went back to his home country, but he is still in contact with my sister and brother who are the same as me. I was devastated at first but eventually moved on, not having much closure from my dad. I've never met my mother either, apart from her giving birth to me and handing me over to my dad. She left after having three kids and depression. Well, as you can see, my family is back and talking to me, as if nothing happened and gaslighting me as usual as before, saying I'm crazy and that my dad never left. My grandmother would come over to my house from her own country and pretend to visit her great-grandchildren while saying how sick she is and how her knees hurt and she needs surgery but they can't afford it. Then my dad would come over and at this point I was wondering to myself why I was letting these people in and eventually told them to leave after they asked to look after all of my money. Now they are slashing my tires, stealing my mail, trying to talk to my husband into letting them inside, facebooking, emailing, etc. My mother also got in contact with me for the first time in my life and immediately asked for money. She is an alcoholic. And I hung up and had a long cry. My husband noticed how badly this has escalated and asked if we should move to a better area. I didn't want to leave, mainly because of the kids' school and friends around this area, but it's probably the best. I have no idea what to do about my family though. Well, Opie, first of all, I'm not so sure you should call them family. Yeah, they're related to you by blood, but they've never treated you as family, so yeah, the definition is a bit big for them. Second point would be, if you have proof that they've been harassing you, like you can prove that they were the ones that slashed your tires and did all that other crap, well then you can press charges on them. And if you don't have proof, then get some. Maybe install some security cameras around your house or whatever. But get the proof you need to get a restraining order and get them out of your life. You owe nothing to these people. And regarding your sister, she's the one that broke your trust. You specifically asked her not to tell anyone. And what does she do? First thing, go tell everyone. So at a minimum, I would put it on a timeout. So yeah, OP, these people aren't your family. Just do what you can to get rid of them and move on with your family, your husband and your children. And what do you guys think OP should do? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's go check out the community comments to see what they said. Deleted says, so coming from a mixed Asian household, I totally know what it's like to be ignored or not exist in a full blood family's eyes. Ignore them. They treated you and your siblings as an inconvenience and bullied your dad into abandoning you guys. They are only your family by blood. You need to stop helping your sister since she can't listen to you. You helped her and she threw you under the bus with your family. Explain to her how she broke your trust and that there is no money to help her out anymore. You don't have to lie, just tell her there's none for her, because it's your money. Report the harassment to the police, the mail theft, and the vandalism. Definitely try to get a restraining order. Invest in security cameras, and if you don't have an in-home security system, get one as soon as possible. Also, make the kids' school aware that you've been having trouble with family members, and make sure only you and your husband can pick them up, or a nanny if you have one. I don't think they should stoop that low to mess with your kids, but people act crazy when it comes to money. And Opie responds, thank you, I will definitely tell my sister this and get in on security cameras. Dork Chops says, you have a common problem in r slash relationships called family-itis. Basically, people give their families a pass because the family is related to them and society teaches you that you're supposed to love your family. You also probably still have an emotional connection with them. 
But you have to realize that these people do not have your best interests at heart and you are basically at war with them. They probably do not respect you and are manipulating you to get things from you. Just because you are related to them doesn't mean they can't look you as an object that they can use and take advantage of. You have to try to look at this rationally. You need a friend that can give you logical, rational advice unclouded by your family's emotions. You need to make it clear to them that if they keep effing with you, extremely bad consequences will follow. And Opie responds, Family Iris? Love it. I do have an emotional connection with them. I think I'm too much of a pushover and need to work on that. I enable too much and need to stand up. I think I might call up my therapist for some help. Derby says, A lot of folks here have advised you on how to deal with the family bit of this, but I think you really need to focus on the security aspect of this. If you have finance-related mail coming to your home, your accounts could already have been compromised. With some very basic social engineering, anyone in your family who knows your social security number could make your life very difficult. I strongly suggest establishing a PO or custodial mailbox with restricted access. Keep any and all paper documentation at home under lock and key. Secure your electronics with passwords that are impersonal and regularly changed. Do the same for online accounts used to monitor your finances. Additionally, many banks' investment firms can add a password to be used when you call in to access your accounts. Add one if that is available to you. Your home security is equally important. Upgraded locks, alarms, cameras, etc. would be sensible precautions to take regardless. I'd also meet with the administration of your children's school to ensure that they are aware that you have not authorized anyone other than yourselves to pick up or visit your children at school. Unfortunately, it may take more than restraining orders to keep your errant family away. You may actually have to relocate just to ensure the safety of your young family. Please do that wisely. Someone determined to undermine your safety precautions can easily do that with as little as a forwarding address request or call to your moving company. Insist on privacy and be merciless about cutting people out of your life that cannot respect boundaries. Additional information from Opie's comments. To clarify, my dad is Japanese and my mother is Euro. Smiley face. I think I might file a police report about the tire slashing and mail stealing. I don't know why I haven't done it sooner. Maybe I've just been giving them excuses since they're related to me. I'm considering a restraining order. It seems like my best bet right now. I'm also going to set up some cameras around the property. Also, regarding my mom, I have no idea who contacted her to tell her, but I'm guessing it was my sister. My dad is a narcissist, so he went out of his way to do whatever he wanted. He was never wrong in his own eyes. My Japanese family is like that too. Finally, I don't really want to say how much I've won, but it contains a lot of zeros. My sister knew exactly how much I won and I feel horrible for telling anyone about this. But what's done is done. Alright, well I think the community gave OP some pretty decent advice, all well in range, and OP did start taking some actions or thinking about some stuff to do. So how about we move on with the update to see how this story ends. Hi everyone, sorry for not posting an update until now. I have quite a few messages asking me how I'm doing, so I thought I'd post here on what's going on. I realized people were trying to figure out where I came from since the dialect or the tone of my writing is a bit off. I actually have a bit of a learning disability, so my partner comes on and sort of corrects some things for me. Anyways, here's the update. In short, we ended up having to move, which is no problem to be honest. It was the safer route for our little family that is growing. We also installed extra security and have contacted the police, schools, neighbors, etc. I'll tell you the story. First of all, I'm just going to say that I stopped talking to my sister. She's acting as if she did nothing wrong, but she knows exactly what she did. So about a month and a half ago, we had already started packing since we were moving away. My dad texted me and asked if I wanted to meet up, just me. I said no at first because I knew that he was going to try and yell at me again for not giving him any money, as well as my grandma. I looked into r slash raced by narcissists that was suggested by some people since he tries to gaslight me a lot. He then ended up writing an email and apologized for everything he had said and done on his and grandma's behalf. I was actually surprised my dad was apologizing for the first time in his life. He then asked if we could meet again, so I caved in and met him. 
We went to a cafe and I had a really nice time talking to him, yet I felt a bit off. We were probably sitting there talking for about an hour. During our whole conversation, he was checking his phone a lot. After we left, I went straight home. My partner had our son with him and found that the property we were living in at the time had been broken into. I realized at that point that dad wanted to distract me by being some sort of a decoy or something. I called the police immediately and told them what happened and that we have security cameras installed so we'll be able to see who did what and when. They scanned the house with a German shepherd dog and had an inspection and investigation. Meanwhile, I contacted my partner and then went down to the police station with them. They started watching the videos and lo and behold, it was my own effing grandmother. I guess she doesn't need that knee surgery after all. I asked the officers what I could do and as many suggested in the first post, they suggested a restraining order, specifically a protection order straight away. I had the evidence. I was so round up that I just wanted to call my dad and effing yell at him because I knew he and grandma planned this together. I decided not to because that could jeopardize things in court. They ended up stealing my jewelry and my partner's oculus. No idea why. I told my partner to store it away properly, but he didn't. The police officer asked me why I didn't want to press charges on them for slashing my tires and stealing my mail. I said I had given them the benefit of the doubt, but I was wrong, so I wouldn't be doing that any longer. The police found my grandmother and father around my property and arrested them. They were standing there pretending to be worried and sad that my house was broken into. My dad went to trial. He couldn't afford a lawyer so he had a public defender. My father was sentenced to four years in prison for robbing our house. I ended up finding out that he did a home invasion many years ago, went to prison and then came out and flew to his home country after his parole ended. I was taken aback by all of this. My grandma is currently in the hospital because she actually did hurt her knee and leg from breaking into our house, which serves her right. However, her trial is coming up soon, since, as I said, she is being treated at the hospital for her knee. Anyway, after all of this happened, at least right now, I have a protection order against them. They cannot come near me or my family or the property. As for my partner and my son, I apologized to him and said I shouldn't have met my dad. He understood and just said that it's normal to crave love. I'm really honestly heartbroken that my family would do this to me, but at least we've moved into a better property. I can get the therapy I need and I can focus on my new family. I am still looking into therapy, but I decided it was the best thing for me at least to go into. Hopefully, I can get the help that I need. And regarding what they stole, we never got it back. I assume they sold it as soon as they stole them. But it's fine because they weren't important. I stored the important jewels in our safe and my husband can get a new Oculus Rift. Thanks for reading. Well, OP, to me the silver lining here is that you are in a better path and your family, hopefully, will not bother you anymore considering your dad is going to jail and your grandma's gonna get tried. As for you and your family, I think you guys are doing the right thing. So all the best in the future, OP, and take care. And now, let's move on to the next post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance, and it's by user IamJJasMe. Don't want to sit inside even though a storm is coming? Okay. I was working at a restaurant waiting tables in a very affluent area on the Jersey Shore. We had our fair share of entitled people who were under the impression that if you throw enough money around, you can do whatever you want and treat people however you want. And when your income depends on their tips, you kinda just have to deal with it. The restaurant had an outdoor dining and bar area that overlooked the ocean with an amazing view. During the summer, this was pretty much where everyone wanted to sit rather than our indoor dining area. And for anyone who works someplace with outdoor dining, you know the one monkey wrench that can ruin a very profitable dinner shift, the weather. No matter how accurate the forecast says it's going to be, you can never know for sure. For the most part, we never had an issue because if it started to abruptly rain, there would usually be more than enough room inside for all the people who were sitting outside to move in. It's usually a cluster F to keep track of which table moved where, but we always handled it without any issue. Until that one day. We had a large party booked one day in our indoor area that took up more than half our tables, a 50th birthday I believe. So our indoor capacity was limited. And even on top of the party, there were customers who were weary about the weather so they decided to sit inside also. And then more and more people started sitting outside. 
My manager did a quick assessment and realized that if it started raining, we would barely have enough room inside to accommodate everyone who was sitting outside. He told us we had to stop seating our outdoor area and to start recommending to our outdoor tables to move inside because of the impending weather to be on the safe side. Everyone's weather app was saying there was a downpour coming up the coast. Everyone was okay with it, except... I had a table of nine people who seemed fairly middle-aged and very wealthy. Margaritas with top-shelf tequila, gaudy-looking jewelry, etc. Each end of the table seemed to be in their own conversation, not paying attention to the other. Upon hearing about the incoming rain, I go to the woman whom I thought was in charge. She had the fakest tan of them all. And tell her, let's call her Karen. Ma'am, I'm really sorry, but because of the weather coming in and our limited seating inside, I'm going to have to move you folks inside so you don't get caught in the rain. This Karen is so entrenched in her conversation that she doesn't even register that I, a lowly waiter, was talking to her. So I try again. Ma'am, I'm sorry for interrupting, but she cuts me off exasperated. What? What are you saying? I begin again. Ma'am, I'm sorry. Because of the weather coming and our inside filling up, we need to move you inside. We have a table ready for you. I can move all your drinks and everything for you. She snaps back with, The only reason we came here was to sit outside. We'll deal with the weather. I realize she doesn't grasp what I'm saying, so I try again. Ma'am, just in case the... And then she goes from zero to a hundred and yells, We'll effing deal with it! She yelled so loudly that the people on the other half of her table heard. They didn't hear our prior exchange, but only heard her outburst and went back to their conversation, assuming this must be normal behavior for her. So, she wants to deal with her on her own? You got it. I began to take their order. Filet mignons, a few lobster tails, expensive crap. I put the order in and I look back and all the other tables had moved inside, because they all were rational human beings and my table of nine entitled jerks were the only ones out there. I heard a leathery looking Karen say to the rest of the table, wow, we have the entire patio to ourselves, what luxury. After a while I looked inside and saw that the table I had held for them was taken by another party that had just walked in, the last available table. And just as the last butt hit the seat, I felt the best feeling I possibly could have felt at that moment. A glorious raindrop tapped on the top of my head. Oh, sweet glory. Within seconds, it went from beautiful blue skies to a torrential downpour. Everyone at the table grabbed their drinks, a little watered down at this point, and ran inside. After they shook themselves dry, they looked around and realized there was nowhere for them to sit. Most of them looked dumbfounded, like a lost child in a supermarket. Karen makes a beeline to me and screams, We need a table! I reply, I'm sorry ma'am, we're fully seated and on a wait for our indoor seating. Maybe one table on the waiting list, but a list is a list. Well, what are we supposed to do? She hogged back at me, which led me to so eloquently saying, Ma'am, as you said you would, you effing deal with it. I air quoted the effing dealing with it to really emphasize that that was her response. And as I said that, everyone else at the table realized that was our interaction earlier and Karen had dug their graves. I felt bad for most of them because if they had all known the circumstances, they probably would have convinced Karen to move in. But after she raised her voice and cursed at me, all bets were off. And as serendipity would have it, at that moment their food came out and we handed it to them. There they were, nine people in damp clothes, holding a Cosmo in one hand and filet mignon in another with nowhere to sit to eat. The rest of her party convinced her to just get some boxes for their food and pay their check and leave. As I hand Karen the check, she smugly says, Well, this will be reflected in your tip. To which I replied, Ma'am, we implement a 20% tip on parties of eight or more. It's our policy and it's clearly stated in our menu. She paid and then they left with their boxed up food, leaving behind their half full drinks. Best $60 I ever made. Well, I guess her training as an X-Men didn't work out, did it, Storm? Thanks for sharing, OP. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I really did enjoy reading them to you. So if you did, then don't be shy and go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe or even share this video with people that you might think will enjoy my storytelling. Also, if you have the time, go down to the video description and check out all the links I have for you, from our Discord community to my channel merch. And finally, I'd like to say thank you for watching. 
it really means a lot to me that you enjoy my videos. And having said all that, I will see you guys in the next video.